Sure. Okay. I think we I think we have everybody. Uh, if anybody else comes in, we'll catch them up real quick. Um, but my name is Neil Raposa. I'm uh, with Civil Consultants out of South Berwick. Uh, we're doing the design, the permitting um, for Navina Acres, which is the 53 lot subdivision that I'm sure uh, many of you are familiar with. Uh, for those you know viewing afterwards, uh, it's a 53 lot uh, residential subdivision that is uh, accessing. Uh, accessing the main road uh, from Norman Court and Halflinger Lane, uh, extending both of those roads out uh, through the through the full parcel. It's two combined parcels, uh, and my portion of the project is the environmental uh, the environmental protection and the DEP permitting uh, for for the development as it gets constructed you know, through the phases uh, all the way to the end here. Uh, so I'll just start off with a. A little brief overview of of the environmental uh, impact and how we're how the mitigation's gone and how the uh, and how the stormwater management plan has been put together. Uh, so currently, there's uh, there's a significant wetland associated with Coffin Brook. Uh, this was previously approved down here for this crossing, uh, which you get different levels of wetland impact permits, uh, and this one had already had already been permitted for. Uh, basically, all the wetland impacts that are there now, it's uh, a similar layout to what was already approved. Um, and let's see, for, uh, for this portion of it, uh, it's not, uh, these were sized, these crossings here were sized uh, per recommendations from Army Corps uh, to, so these are bigger box culverts, something that can uh, let, you know, the wildlife and the flows go through similar to they are now. Uh, once you get down through to here, uh, similar with these crossings, it's all with the recommendation from Army Corps. They have to come through and, and take a look at it. They will be uh, approving and reviewing everything. Uh, so that will all get through uh, that process, and everyone's going to be reviewing that. Uh, for the stormwater treatment portion of it, uh, we're proposing uh, five wet ponds and uh, two, I'm sorry, four uh, grass filters. Excuse me, I'm all dry here. <coughs> Apologize. Did, Not you, best. did you say grass filters? Uh, grass filters, okay. yep. Thanks. <coughs> get used to the mask again. Uh, so as far as our treatment goes, uh, we have several, uh, several of the treatment facilities on this lower road. And up on, uh, on Norman Court, uh, we're depending on, on one wet pond up top here, uh, several areas of wooded buffers, which will be uh, maintained in their natural state uh, to treat uh, stormwater going through. That's really the preferred way that DEP wants to see most of it done. It preserves land and you get treatment out of it. And so we have quite a bit of those. Um, for individual lots, uh, we're proposing, uh, they're called roof drip edge filters. It ends up being kind of a bioretention filter up along the buildings, which has filtration media in it. And it drops down through and collects all the sediment and particles and treats it before it gets into the groundwater. Um, if we look, look at this one, this is probably the easiest, easiest one to see. Um, any area that's hatched here, that's all designated as buffer area, and that can't be, uh, that can't be cut or cleared through here, that all has to remain as as undeveloped and untouched, so you can get you can get that treatment uh, before getting into before getting into the neighboring lands here. Um, all these open spaces, it, these are not necessarily untouched. Some of those uh, could be developed as ball fields or parks, something for the residents to use up here. Uh, so anything. This open space down here, even though it's most likely not going to be true development with pavement and buildings, it's going to still be protected, uh, you know, from anything that they put in here. <coughs> Any, we are going to limit the, uh, the fertilizers or anything that's used in there, but it's still a protection for the stormwater. So when you get anything collecting in here, you're still going to have that protection from flow and from treatment there. Uh, Neil, yep. <clears throat> the area uh, 
just behind, like, for example, behind my lot, uh, which is right at the the old uh, cul de sac. Yep. Okay, right in behind there. Isn't that all wetland in there? And the question was, he was uh, just yeah, confirming right whether or not all this was wetland in behind this this uh, existing lot here off of Halfling Lane, and that's correct. This, uh, all these little the little hatches here indicate that it's wetland in that area. So this area coming all the way through here, that is all wetland coming down through, and that's all associated with Coffin Brook, which is uh, you know a DEP brook that has to have uh, you know more more special requirements and review whenever we're working with that and so he won't be building in there no no nope all of this here this is all open space coming all the way through and then this is all open space coming all the way down to here so there's no there's no construction through there the only thing that would happen in there would be a possible clearing to get out to here like i said to do a little park or something but nothing hard state out there and, and the bridge that was already okay like the bridge that correct the yep yeah, when you come down through here, this access way is that uh, that was already approved. That impact is already approved with uh, with the crossings that we're proposing here. So that's that was with the Damaris lot before. Correct. Yeah. Right. So it all it all still has to go through. Right. Uh, the question was, was that approved with the Damaris subdivision? And yes, it was. But it still has to all go through. Right. Uh, the yeah, review. Right. Yeah. As if it's not. As if it wasn't. You know. So. That's is, all. He, is he doing that stretch of road with bridges, or is he doing it with uh, giant culverts? This one's going to be. It's going to. He's. Uh, the, I'm sorry. The question was: Is he going to be doing that with bridges or with giant culverts? And the answer is: uh, This swelling will be. It will be uh, crossed with fill, and then with culvert sized uh, per DEP and Army Corps recommendations mm -hmm. for both for flow and for wildlife. So. I guess um, one thing I'll show you here is uh, the when we go through and do try to do the treatment design, there's certain standards that we have to meet for DEP. Um, we have to treat we have to treat 95 percent of uh, of the developed area that of the of the impervious area. I'm sorry, uh, and we have to treat 80 percent of the developed area. So even if you just clear it and have lawn there. You still have to treat 80% of, of everything you touch. So, as you can see, a lot of it is a lot of it has been achieved. Uh, you know, we we bring all this through. This section basically comes through and comes to a wet pond. And wet ponds, if you're not familiar with them, it is it's a pond that that, as the name suggests, continuously stays wet. It's it settles out. Um, you know, the turbidity and sediments, and then there's a filter a uh, filter strip where the water uh, comes up onto a shelf and comes down through that filter and that both cools the water and removes pollutants. So we did that in several places here. We had one here, here, here. And that's the corner that most of this ends up draining to naturally. Uh, we had to collect some of it through here and pipe it down through, pipe it to here and swale it in places. There's a lot of different you know techniques we use to try to get everything somewhere efficiently and still be able to, to treat the volume. So, um, so with this, when you're looking at this, all of, uh, all of this color here is the untreated areas. And a lot of these, um, we're still, if we're going to be working in here, we still have to take that into account, even though it was technically a previous approval. We have to make sure we treat that or count it as you know, untreated against our, our values. Uh, so, as you can see, the majority of it has been uh, has been treated here. We're meeting all the requirements with the design as shown. Um, so that still needs to go through review at DEP, and they'll have they'll have their, their engineers go through it. We'll kind of work out you know, any discrepancies they find, any improvements they want to see. That's kind of that's a six month process to go through all that. So it's something that. You know, everyone takes seriously and puts uh, you know plenty of effort into. And as you can see here, any of the areas that aren't shaded, these are all areas that are you know, not to be developed. So these are all protected resources, the wetlands, and those will be uh, 
those aren't counted in our, our total developed area. So we don't get credit for leaving those. We just don't have to treat them. Neil, tell me what you mean by treated. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Um, the question was, what do I mean by treated? And the treated means any of that stormwater that we capture and direct to a treatment facility like, a, like one of those grass filters or the wet ponds, that's considered treated so long as the, uh, the ponds are sized per DEP standards. Anything untreated is something that flows to the wetlands uh, without receiving treatment. And so those, we, we want to keep that, to, uh, you know, we try to keep that to the house lots and the, you know, the lawns and things like that, as opposed to anything that has you know, traffic on it or, or uh, you know, large parking areas. These residential subdivisions, um, the amount of pollutants that really come off the lots is not significant compared to, say, if you have like a Walmart or something where you have a lot of collection at one place. Uh, this is disconnected impervious is what they call these lots. So it has, it gives the, gives the environment itself, you know, more, more opportunity to, to treat, you know, runoff on its own as opposed to having to force it to a pond, so. What are the dark blue areas, shaded areas? Dark blue, is that you're talking here? Yep. These are the untreated areas that uh, either we can't, uh, we don't have the opportunity to get treatment before it gets to the wetland, like say this one here. This one, we weren't able to get anything, uh, you know, put in there close to those wetlands enough to treat what's, what's running through here out into these little wetlands and dumping into this. So that ends up, uh, even if we put buffers around it, we don't have, it goes down too steep or there's not enough vegetation. So we don't get credit for treatment, even though we're leaving it, we're kind of leaving it as is. Well, isn't that that big blue area, or isn't that in uh, the Jack's property? It's, is this blue? Yes, this, this big blue property here. Yep, and that, we had, to, we had to keep that in our treatment plan, even though it was technically, it was technically uh, accepted prior to this, yep. uh, just due to the fact that this subcatchment now includes our little portion of roadway here. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so we don't, get, we don't get credit for anything that was proposed before. Even if, um, even if anything in here could get treated, now that we don't have, you know, the rights to here, we can't take credit for saying we're going to come in here and buffer this whole thing. It doesn't work. We have to, we have to take that as untreated area and make it up in the rest of the lot here. I, I, another question about uh, the wet ponds, and you talked about some filtering. So are these? hopefully self-sustaining or is somebody responsible for checking in on them from time to time, make sure they're still doing the job? Yep. And the question was, are the filters a self-sustaining uh, thing or is, should be some, someone be checking in on them time to time to make sure they're still you know, working as they should? And the answer to that is they are, they're something that needs to be maintained. Uh, so that's, that's uh, one of the main reasons you get a lot of, you know, almost every subdivision now has a homeowners association set up and a big portion of that is to make sure that the, one, the roads, if it's not a town road, and then two, the stormwater is maintained. Because it's a big effort and uh, it requires recertification every five years. You have to have something written up that proves that everything has been maintained and is working as it's supposed to. Uh, so that's, that's definitely a big part of it. Uh, the stormwater treatment is making sure everything gets maintained as it should. Will the town be recognizing all this, all the uh, roads? Because technically they, they don't recognize a cul-de-sac. Yep, the, the question was, will the town be, I'm going to say accepting, right? Accepting all the roads as town roads, is that what yeah. you mean? Yep. And the answer to that is no. The, uh, the, all these connected roads, as you said, uh, these will be town roads coming through, and then this cul-de-sac and this cul-de-sac here, those are both going to be private roads. So okay, even so, the original Halflinger Lane entrance, that would be part of the town road then? Correct. Yeah, the question was, the original Half Halflinger Road entrance will be part of the town road, and that is correct. If, if the town accepts um, the whole new road as a town road, then this portion is included in that, and maintenance and... Responsibility goes to the town on that portion. 
Yeah, if he though, if he connects down through instead of through Halflinger, just for utilities and whatnot, then Halflinger Lane, the original, stays as a as a unrecognized uh, cul-de-sac. Yeah, and the, the question is, if he if he were to connect somewhere else down here to Route Nine, then Halflinger Lane would remain a private road without town maintenance, and that is correct. Yeah, that would remain private, and it would be. That'd be the homeowners there in charge of taking care of everything on that road. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. You said about limited uh, pesticide use. Uh, are there going to be covenants on the lots that the homeowners will have to sign, or uh, that is, um, we do not have the homeowners. It'll be in the homeowners association documents, mm -hmm. uh, and I do not have a draft of those um, for for this application. Uh, we're still awaiting a lawyer to to yeah. go through and make sure we have. I have all the language the way they want it. Uh, that's not something that's it's not something that's required for uh, the DEP application, but it's something that can definitely be you know requested or, or commented on. Yeah. Well, it's just such a delicate ecosystem out there that you know these are going to be very wealthy houses, and everybody wants a green lawn. So mm -hmm. Ken Lawn's going to be in there and stuff. So there will be guarantees about that, huh? And the question was, you know, they're going to be wealthy houses, and they're going to want green lawns with with uh, you know. No weeds. Right, with no weeds or anything, and, and, and outfits will be out there trying to beautify the lawns. So will there be you know, guarantees that nothing will be put on it? And to that, I don't have the final, you know, I don't have the final laws. Uh, it's generally in, in you know, my past you know, work with these, it's always been put into, put into the bylaws, uh, especially with, with the us, DEP. Yeah, you know, with the DEP when they, when they go through and they request it. Uh, we deal with Everybody out, everybody at the DEP, so uh, the groundwater uh, division, you know, drinking water, even if it's, even if it's on you know, private water, they still come through and, and, and give their comments. Along with the Army Corps, uh, we go through, we have to do uh, this one. Since there's so much, you know, so much wetland impact just to get the access through, right. uh, we show, you know, we have to show that we minimize the impact as, as much as we possibly can to get those crossings in, but there's still enough there that they'll do a very, thorough review and we have to do uh, we have to do reports and studies and say you know we've impacted it to the least you know we possibly can to get uh, to get access throughout here so so they'll have comments on anything we put on the ground or on you know, on the land so thank you and then that would mean that the town is responsible for maintaining the that the uh, culverts are open uh, the question was the town is responsible for making sure the culverts are open and that is that's one that I have seen go uh, either way uh, in in the agreements with the town when they take it over. Um, for these, if the if the inverts are within that town right of way, then yeah, that would put that you know directly on the town to get those you know to keep those keep those up and in running condition. Uh, anything that comes outside, the town has they have the right to maintain it, but they don't have the obligation. Uh, so if something was Something were to, you know, be failing, and the town said you need to fix this. They could go in and build a homeowners association to do the work, but it's still it's on the onus of the homeowners association to to get it done. So. And what if they didn't? And the question was, what if they didn't? Ooh, so no. if what if over time the the cul-de-sacs fill in and the town says we can't afford it and the and the homeowners association doesn't maintain it is there any redress for that that would go into enforcement with the dep and so that would that would bring them into the equation and they have uh you know they have people watching for uh you know for violations and it's it's more it's more on you know larger projects like this that they are keeping an eye on it uh there's a lot of projects from you know the past you know much further back that have not been maintained and they're hard to keep up with. Uh, for things like this, when when we put this in, we have, we put together a full maintenance plan and scheduled inspections, and it needs to be uh, recertified every five years. So you have to send in the documentation to the DEP every five years, otherwise they put it in violation, and then you're you're paying fines and, and you're getting in trouble that way. Uh, so that's kind of been their, uh, their their method of making sure it's being maintained or at least you know, observed so they know when something is going wrong. Okay, thank you. Yep. So 
the, the concern for the library is that Morning Dove Court has already been re-landscaped, I mean, because it's there. And the condominium across the street has been done. Um, what's that going, have you taken that into consideration for flooding? Um, yeah, um, the question was, uh, there's been a lot of work on, on, the, uh, on the opposite side, correct, of, of the road here? Along the library side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just repeating for the for the video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and is has any of uh, the impacts of that been taken into effect uh, in the design for the stormwater for flooding and flow? And the answer to that is is yes. What we've uh, what we've done is we've we take everything into account that's that's impacting this site even from above. Uh, I don't have my prints. If I can grab it here. Yeah, here we go. I, I apologize. It's it's so small, uh, but this is the actual stormwater study that we put together for uh, for the lot. And this portion here is is the lot that our subject lot. This is Cemetery Road here. So we take it all the way from as far as far up as we can the contributing area, and uh, so we do take into account anything that happens or anything that, that impacts that portion. You know of of our lot so what does the yellow denote does that denote really heavy swampy areas or this one yeah it's this is actually uh these are different soil types for uh, for drainage that's, that's your soil. so it's it's the hydrologic soil group it's how we determine how much water comes off that land yeah so it's almost like an aquifer isn't it no it's no. it's it's just a it's more the surface uh, the surface soils okay. so if, if you have a type of soil that that doesn't you know? Doesn't let a, a lot of right. water run right. off it. Or a clay base. Yeah, you, you, right. You call it a soil, and you don't get much runoff off it. Mm -hmm. And you have D soil, which is more the wetland type soils. Yeah. You know, rain hits that, and it's gone. And it just keeps flowing. Yeah. So you have to account for that downstream. So that's what we. That's what all these all these colors account for. Those different types of soils. And we, on the site, you actually have a professional, uh, a professional site evaluator go out there and dig test pits and know exactly what's there. Mm -hmm. And then anything off the site where we're, you know, they don't want us out there digging around, that's, there you have a, a national soil service that puts together, you know, generic uh, delineations that aren't quite as exact, but they're still, you know, high enough quality to use for yeah. the analysis. Well, as it stands now, it's been quite a wet, We've had a lot of, oh, we had 10 inches in July, something like that. Oh, yeah. So we have run water out there that generally this time of year is dry. You know, it tends on being late spring. To right. Yeah, and, the, you know, and the comment was we've had a lot of rain this year and, and yeah. you see a lot of, a lot of water kind of where, it, where, it's, yeah, where it's not usually. Right. And a lot of water where it's higher than, than it normally is. Right. Uh, and that's, and that, what we do for our, for our stormwater and flooding analysis yeah. is uh, there's different levels of you know moisture you can assume the earth already has before you right. before you start putting the rain on it. Right, correct. So we always assume that it's that it's uh, you're assuming wor worse than it potentially right. is, right? Yeah, we, we assume like we have a near saturated kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, we yeah. have a near we have a near saturated uh, land, and then from there we add more rain. Then you know you're probably going to see. I know they've upped they've upped all the storms in the past 15 years since I've been doing it. Right. They you know so they used to say you know, a hundred year storm was 5.2 inches in a day, and now I think it's up to 7.8 inches in a day. Oh, okay. So they're trying to take into account those additional flows that are coming in, okay. and that's you know that's one of the reasons why when you're looking at this one, you know we have so many ponds in one area right. because when you look at those storms you're trying to catch. You know, well, in the, the past, more, more that's developed up the hill, right. it, it alleviates absorption. It, right. And it's yep, and that's headed down the road. And that's the whole thing. Yeah, you try to, like I was saying, that dis disconnected impervious. You're really trying to try to get more of that. Right. And it's there. You know, there's two different ways you can go about it. Oh yeah. A lot of people go, you know, say cluster development. It's good, 
because it leaves so much land undeveloped, you know, yeah. beyond that cluster. Right. But then you have a large amount of impervious, you right. know, that could right. be close to a resource, and you have to kind of, right. you have to kind of weigh the, the to balance that. Yeah, up. exactly. You have to weigh the options. Uh, and for this one, it's it's hard because any kind of cluster you try to do on this one, you're packing everything right up against wetlands. Well, it's, not a, having it's a it, unique yeah. piece of property yep. when you really think about it. Yeah, no, it's it's there's. There's been a lot of round and round on this one when we're trying to get it get it right, and this you know, this was you know, the least impactful uh, least impactful we could get with access to the full lot. So I did I did want to throw in that uh, the crossing here for Coffin Brook. Uh, how many of you are you know live down on Normand or have ever you know ventured out to that crossing? Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's a problem crossing. As far as DEP and Army Corps are concerned, because right. you know it, it starts low on the high end, oh, yeah. and then it sh shoots out, and it's you know too far above that bank, you know when it comes out of the other side. Okay. So it, it ends up being uh, an impediment to any wildlife that that's you know trying to cross through there. Right. Right. So for that one, that's um, we're we'll be required to improve that to be you know a, a large arch culvert that has you know natural stream bottom on it, uh, which is. Double-edged sword well, because then have cement culverts across that one. This at that crossing? Yeah. No. Nope. That, that right now, you mean? Well, Norman Court Extension when it hits that water, when it hits Coffin's Brook, isn't isn't there cement culverts across? Correct. There? Yes, he was asking if there's cement culverts that currently uh, cross this uh, Coffin Brook across Norman Court. And yes, that's yes, okay. Yes, that's currently okay. you know big thirty-six inch concrete yep. culvert. Right. And the Army Corps absolutely hates it. Okay. They want to see okay. you know those big arch culverts. I'm talking arch culverts. I mean yeah, right. So that foot. allows wildlife right. and so forth. Though. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So it, it brings it back to a natural stream, you know, condition, okay. as opposed to right coming out of a pipe like a faucet. Right. So okay. Isn't there what we have in the cul-de-sac down below? You have the multiple. We have huge pipes. Yep. You have the multiple multiple pipes through there and that's that's what they have when it's not considered a stream it's considered you know uh, a wetland yeah. uh, so you have multiple yeah. you try to put multiple in there so you get you get a flow that's that's trying to act more like that kind of sheet flow coming off so when it comes out of there it's dispersed more and you don't have that uh, that defined channel yeah. you go into coffin brook you got you know 18 inches down and it's square, yeah, rocky right. bottom, you know it's a brook. Right. Yeah, two of those are on my property. You know, there's, there's two that come in through the center cul-de-sac and then the two that come out, come out into my, my uh, lot. Yep. And the animals use that quite a bit, okay, which the, is nice. The comment was that these, uh, the larger culverts that were previously put in for the, for the halflinger cul-de-sac, uh, there's two large culverts and uh, three large cars. Is it two there's or three out there? Yes. Four, actually. Yeah, there's two and two. Two and two. Yeah. yeah. So there's uh, uh, large culverts that come through here, and uh, it was noted that, that some wildlife is actually able to use those uh, because those were oversized for for the flows, but uh, for wildlife, they want to see you know, they want to see a little little more substantial crossing through there to get to get access. Yep. I don't know if I've ever. Seen seen deer go through there, but I see all of the other paint in the neck. Uh, <laughs> yep. Which I don't touch. <laughs> so the other thing you need to take into consideration though with 53 lots going in there is a sidewalk going down Sullivan Street. For safety, it's, it's pretty important for people okay. to be able to walk because there is no sidewalk there to Pine Hill Road. Yeah, and the comment was uh, uh, take into consideration the sidewalk uh, on Pine Hill Road uh, for safety of pedestrians. That's that's more of a planning board issue for that one. We're, for this one we're just doing the environmental portion of it so I can't I can't really speak to any other aspects of it because it kind of be talking out of school so uh, I, it's noted though, and it's it's on the record here. Uh, Already, you mean that was taken into consideration? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, it's not not part of of my you know my purview or my my contribution. So it would be, uh, but I, I definitely I, I understand what you're saying.
Yes, there's going to be a lot of uh, new people coming in there. Yeah. At least 120 cars. At least. Yep. So what, what, because there's going to be a lot of traffic going in and out of there as well, both Hafflinger and Norman, has that been taken into consideration for traffic safety? Uh, the comment was, is the, all the cars coming in have been taken into consideration for traffic safety? Uh, and again, it's not, it's not so much part of the, the DEB uh, review for traffic safety uh, for my, for uh, the environmental impacts that we're discussing here, but I, I can tell you it definitely has. And I, uh, unassociated with this, uh, there will be a traffic study, a full traffic study completed uh, so that everyone knows, you know, the exact impacts of the traffic. Yeah. And so when that traffic study is done, that will be put out some way or other? How, how, what are we going to know? The, how are we going to know the results of the traffic study? Uh, the question was, uh, how would, or is the town and, and the community going to know the results of the traffic study? And uh, again, associated from the DEP portion of it, but that will be have to be submitted to the town and will be put into uh, the documents that will be available for review uh, at the town. So does that mean the planning board or? Correct, yeah, okay. yeah the, at the planning board. I think, I think he said at that planning board meeting that there would be a public meeting. Yes, about there'll that. be another public meeting like this. Our guy here is just basically with the soil and so, stuff like so that. Water. He's not really with the traffic, so correct. Yeah. Give him a break. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that, talk about that and the yeah, the comment was there'll be there'll be another public hearing uh, regarding traffic and other issues with the site uh, that everyone wants to, to you know get input on and get and get the information that we collect. Uh, and that is correct. Yep, this this meeting is more for environmental and, and stormwater portions, things like that. But there will still be. Uh, Future meetings that, that address uh, address the traffic and, and other concerns, and I, I may be heading those up too. But for this one, I, I'm supposed to try and stick to the stick to the environmental portion of it. <clears throat> yes, I'm going to assume that when you're talking about water flow, that you have models that take into consideration the disruption caused by uh, foundations. And you understand how they will move the water through the especially the ordering what areas and the question was uh, when we're doing stormwater modeling just take into account uh, buildings and foundations and how it how it uh, you know reroutes water and changes the water going into the wet areas and uh, the answer to that is yes we um, we do take that into consideration with all the modeling uh, we take into account all of any impervious areas that are going in and for uh, many of the, the buildings and foundations that are going in in this project uh, they will have uh, those uh, foundation drip edge filters that the point of those is, you, is you'll catch that, you'll catch the runoff coming from the building and portion of the site, uh, bring it down through a filter uh, and allow that to, uh, to be, you know, located and piped to somewhere that's more stable and then you have uh, an area that's, that has a riprap or seeding stone to be able to spread that out and avoid, you know, that, that major channelization or things that can happen when you just have you know, water shooting down off a roof and, and just scouring as it as it falls through there. So yeah, that's that's definitely taken into consideration when we do this. Okay. Well, I have another question. I could keep going. Did you guys can, you know, get the hook. Um, so You're if making him sweat though. It, <laughs> but he's got all he's on all yes, I feel as though I'm like, you know <laughs> environmental impact one oh one here. But um, I've heard a lot of people talking about the wildlife, and I'm curious if there are, I don't know if we'd call them studies or standards that show that when you're taking such a large, diverse, undeveloped property, and then you develop it with lawns, and, you know, and I know that the developer was very conscious about some very special trees that are on the property, but is there any like assessment? Because there are going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of wildlife that's displaced when this happens, okay. and they have to go somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to try to truncate that one a little bit. Yeah, but uh, it's the basic premise is uh, there is going to be a lot of wildlife displaced with this development, and is are there studies and 
and uh, guidance uh, with projects like this that will have uh, a large impact. And um, you think that pretty close? Yeah, okay. yeah. That's close enough. <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and the answer is, is yes. What we, what we end up doing is uh, initially when we go through, uh, we have a pre-application meeting with the DEP. Um, we try to get comments from, uh, from the different departments. Uh, for a project like this, uh, we, what we've done with this one is you start with, uh, it's called the beginning with habitat study. And that gives you basic, uh, you know, more general, this is, you know, habitat that is noted for, you know, white-tailed deer or cotton-tailed rabbit or something of that nature. Uh, and that just acts as a starting point uh, to submit to uh, Inland Fisheries and Wildlife of Maine. Uh, and then they go through and do an analysis and, and determine, um, determine if there are, you know, endangered, threatened species, uh, what, what the overall impact will be. And then they give their recommendations uh, to the permitting authority for the DEP. So then we go back and, and you know, possibly modify designs, modify crossings, uh, have you know, areas of development, uh, you know, dedicated to more dedicated to open space and things like that. Uh, so that's again, that's it's part of the part of the process with all the different departments that we we go through through DEP to to make sure we're having as little impact as possible. That's not to say that there will be you know, no wildlife through here. You're, I'm sure you're going to have still have the same the same bear coming through. So, well, I hope to be a space into the <laughs> development of the Zen and not me. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of uh, hawks. I've noticed a large amount of hawks. Would you send them to my house? <laughs> <laughs> they perch in the trees. I see them all the time. Um, there's also a ton of black crows. They're giant. Oh, yeah. They're huge. Alan indicated there are a lot of hawks that he's seen out here, as well as, as very large black crows in the area. There are some ravens around. And there's some ravens, apparently. Yeah. They're bigger than the crows. Okay, I've got one more. So in previous meetings there was concern, and I felt the same way, that it seems like this is a lot of houses in this property. And I know it's a big lot, but the because you're here and it looks like there's all kinds of you know good environmental studies and things like that that are saying that this property can support this but uh, I guess I would say is it because of the lot size is it because of the amount of money the developer needs to make or is it just seems like it's a it's a lot of lots and I was sort of hoping that with all that wetland area that maybe there wouldn't be quite so many. And the comment I was how to turn that into a question. <laughs> the comment was there there are there seem to be a lot of lots in this project. Uh, and there was hope that with the amount of wetlands that it would it would cut down the amount of maybe yes. The yes. amount of development more. Yes. And um, I guess my only my only response to that is is uh, when the town goes through and, and and you vote in, um, you know, the dimensional requirements for the different zones and, and everything like that. Um, that ends up, that ends up reflecting in what can be developed out here. Uh, so you end up with uh, with things like like resource protection zones and and items like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, you know, that's the reason that um, when you come through here, and we have uh, this unnamed stream, even though it is an unnamed stream. Since it's since it's been you know designated as a stream by the site evaluator, no no uh, nothing can be done at all within 75 feet of that. Similar to this on this side, and of course uh, of course Coffin Brook. Uh, so it's things like that are taken into account. Um, it's as I said, is if it's if it's allowed by the zone and the use, then it's you know it's it's available for development so long as 
the DEP does the review and, and makes sure that it's, you know, that it's not going to have, you know, a detrimental impact on the environment. So okay. that's the best I could do with that one. So along Mitchell's corridor down the, down the border. Come down through here. Come down to the corner of my property. Am I seeing a collection right through here? Yes. Yep. This there's yep. there's a wet pond at that at that corner. Yep. Okay. Because I'm right. Okay. Yep. And then this is this is kind of where that uh, right wall. Where that's, that's my back. Yeah. What goes through there? Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. And that's right. one of. I was curious on on the model plan that you had for that wetland runoff in through there. Yep. Or is this, so this this is really the, the stormwater uh, plan here. So okay. this, yeah. So what we that that was my concern. What was gotcha? Yeah. So for this one, what we're this portion of the roadway here, this this sliver on this side, yeah. And this portion, which is actually this is open space. So this is okay. This is going to be undeveloped okay. uh, because of that wetland there. Right. Uh, we can't do too much. We have to stay 25 feet away from that wetland with our even with our pond that we put in. Uh, so this this pond here will just be taken here, and this portion of and this portion of the corner lot, and then uh, with the wetland, uh, I mean with the wet pond uh, outlet here, it controls that flow so that anything coming out across your property because the elevation gradient is probably 15 feet from right. Yeah, when it comes off the property line down to the down to the brook. Yep, yeah, and if you're looking at this here, you can yeah, see where on, we have. Well, on my side, it drops probably. Yep. Yeah, and if you, it's it's tough to see in here because we kind of right. It's, okay. it's light on the, on the contours. Yes. But if you come up here and, and take a look, you can kind of see where that where that uh, where that comes through on this yeah, side. Right. And here we have this. Most of these wet ponds are dug more into the ground. Right. Than, uh, than you know, built well, that's up. That's a fairly high piece burns. behind me, I, and I, I haven't yep. been over there to measure it. But right on the other side, it's wet. Yeah, so coming that's down through here. Controlled. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure this. I'm sure this through here. Yeah, that's. Is is a. Well, as kids, we used to skate on the other side. Right. Up coming down front, right down where this where this pond. Right. Yeah. Yep. I saw that one too, and that's. For this one, we, we took this as, as a separate outlet showing what contributes to this stream. So we, okay. we make sure we don't, uh, right. we're not impacting uh, this portion of it. And really a lot of that comes from uh, pulling in a lot of the, the uh, uphill ground that was draining to that prior. Okay. Kind of redirected that so we could get it out here and treat it. And then we kept this as we sought to keep that buffer in there for that stream. So we have, you know, there's, there's a lot of area in there that's just not able to be developed through there. Okay. Something else yeah. I don't know. Well, no, some of the questions. It's not your area, so this is stormwater. Yeah. 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 It I mean, one of the big limits to what you can ask, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of. Right. It's what, it's, I, yeah, what I get into. It's developing. But, right. right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, one of the big things you want to get out of this is, you know, if you hadn't taken one of the public notice yeah. sheets there, it has that uh, that highlighted uh, highlighted address on the bottom. You can send uh, your comments to, to DEP, and they will get put in the file. Um, you can call the Portland DEP office as yeah. well. I well, know. I know you're hired to take care of your section or whatever. You, right, yeah. you don't, like they say, don't shoot the messenger. You know, there's a bigger entity that's trying to produce this opportunity for money because of the pandemic that's going on, basically. That's how I look at it. Because in a normal infrastructure of your community, you come with normal growth. You don't come with a big... To me, this is a huge project. You've got two entrance roads, which they're looking for a third. They're looking for... I know they're looking for a Route 9 access, which will change Hefflinger and the cul-de-sac and, and whatever, but that's a pretty heavy... Um, community of homes with with an entrance and an exit on two different lanes, very s couple hundred feet apart, maybe yeah. three the, max. And the the comment was, you know, it, was, it is a large development with 
you know, with a, with a lot of homes and, and two different entrances. Yeah. And I know just from my previous experience, I was involved with the permitting of okay. the Damaris yeah, right. subdivision. That was a 19 lot subdivision. Yes, correct. And then there was a separate subdivision to the north, which had a similar number. Um, so it's that I think the amount of the amount of homes and traffic had both of those been you know fully developed yes would have been similar yes just this one now allows for for connection uh, between them yeah, and I wasn't familiar with the other one the Damaris yep. one I am very much yes yep. and but so that's so this kind of what this does when we connect these two subdivisions yes it allows for the town of Berwick to take over the roads okay. and pick up the maintenance and okay. it's, it ends up being an easier situation for you know for the residents for the community right and right. it's it's you end up getting you know you end up getting a more you know a more usable land just through the fact that now if Berwick's can take it over you have to put in sidewalks yes and those items so you end up having you know a nice you know a nice street that's available for walking yeah. and, and things like that uh, as far as the density of the subdivision, I think once, you know, if everything gets gets through there and you end up walking through, I think it will be a lot more, a lot more. Well, I was, you know, I, I think so. We don't want to, yeah. we would like not to see a major impact if not, you know, I mean, sometimes developments make a major impact in, a, in an area that, you know, that allows for growth. But, you know, I mean, things happen. It's just questioning, you know, just... Dob Dobson looks, do you know the, the Dobson development? Yeah, it's going to look very similar to this, I think. Yeah, That's uh, Dobson isn't too bad. It's, you know, it's got the one sidewalk. Yeah. I walk up there all the time. And the houses are spaced apart pretty well. Yeah. And the trees are, they, they, they have a pretty hefty control yeah. of trees in that development there. I think some of us didn't think that that would be... In a normal situation, normal growth in society, you wouldn't see a development like that. So you see, I see this as outside money looking for an opportunity yeah. to make money. So then I don't, and, and, and everybody has the right to do whatever. I just look at someone having an opportunity to squeeze a, un, squeeze a unit in a back area where it normally probably you wouldn't have had growth just because of the, there's an opportunity because there's two, there's two Hefflinger and Norman Court. They're not, that they're, they're not a friendly entrance anyway from Pine Hill or Old Pine Hill. They're just, but you yeah, know. the neighbors just the way it looks <laughs> when you say it's not, it's not friendly. friendly. And, uh, well, one of them, Norman <laughs> Court, comes out. You might as well just drive into the parking lot of the, of the library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. you have Sullivan yeah. Street that comes down, and there's Norman yep. Court, and then Hefflinger Lane mm -hmm. is here. It's not a, hasn't been a designed right. infrastructure. Right. Let's, be so it looks right. like we just stuff it in here, yep. and right. we're going right. to put a lot of housing. Um, the, the separation of wetlands, you know, that buffer zone, I mean, I think most of the people in the community don't want to jam-pack it full of housing. So having nice lots and separation is appealing, you know. The comments are some comments about, about the traffic and the, and the design of, of the existing entrances, uh, and as, as well as the separation of lots and the separation from wetlands. Yeah. Uh, and I can, I can say that the, the entrances, you know, unrelated to this, the entrances will be, you know, they'll be evaluated when, yes, when right. a traffic study goes through right. and, you know, and, and you know, recommendations or improvements will be, you know, will be given by, uh, by a traffic engineer. Right. And, uh, you know, as far as, as the separation of the lots and, and the wetlands, the, you know, the developer does not want to have, you know, clear cut house to house. It's just, it's not, it's not desirable. Right, it's right, not, no. you know, nobody, nobody really wants to see that when they, you know, when they live in a development. No, I, so it's, no, you, know, you, correct. you want to, you want to try and keep, you want to try and keep that, you know, keep those buffer areas with good vegetation regardless as yeah. as a as a developer correct so and also if anybody didn't sign in feel free on the way out to get that all right so go and just sign right in so i don't know if you want to answer this question or not but is it uh is bodwell the going to be the uh, builder 
Uh, the developer? The question was, is Bob going to be the, the, the builder or the developer? Is, I'm, not, I'm not sure if he's going to be doing the construction. He's the, you know, his entity is, you know, will be the developer. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure about how, you know, how the, how the construction is breaking out. If there's contractors, that's, that's well beyond where we're at right they now. And he owns a solar farm. Okay, that explains a lot. Yeah. Want to expand and expound upon that? <laughs> yep. Um, that explains. That explains well, it's uh, you know just full borough ended up being a bedroom community, <laughs> and then infrastructure. You know, you, you like to think the big balance of industry and and housing to offset the cost. It just you don't want to load your community with you upset the balance taxes that go up if there's a lot of children come in and, and everyone you know it's a free society you do what you want but you like growth to be gradual because you know just like everything else you got to do an impact study and think about what you could end up with as opposed to what might happen now you know yeah, just, it's just, it, 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 it all merits a conversation it's a comment made about about uh, you know uh, keeping growth you know at a commiserate rate as as you know industry and availability and right. and, and you know municipal infrastructure uh, and I think uh, most towns they try to do that with with um, you know their development regulations with yes. you know either lot sizes or or building permits per year. Uh, at Berwick is you know per development it's you know you get the 20 units yeah. uh, per year uh, that those are generally the way it, they you know they try to curb all that right uh, as well as you know design the schools and school improvements right. for uh, to handle you know incoming incoming population changes right uh, it's it's and that's that's a tough one to predict all the way around uh, right. it's it's hard to Especially nowadays, when it's you, you don't know if you have a bunch of new homes, how many families with kids are going to be in those. Oh, absolutely. You know, so it's, it's you may just have a lot of retirees, and it doesn't have anywhere near the impact you thought it would. Right. Or you, you know, it's you, it's just so hard to. Right. It's so hard to predict things like that. And then you can. Right, really? and it's so so it's it's the best it's the best towns can do to to keep reviewing you know, reviewing regulations and, right. and and changing where it has to. Uh, so I mean it's it's out of it's kind of out of my hands. I'm, no 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 no. You know, I, no but I but I hear what you're saying. Not yeah. shooting the messenger, yeah. there, you know. <laughs> uh, so this is in the beginning stage. Happy to say, we're not sure. How long but, do you think? Well, it's a question. Um, Merit's a question. Building a conversation, starts. you know. Um, the question was if it's in the beginning stages, how long before construction starts? Uh, for for this project. Uh, it requires, like I said, the full site location permit application from DEP. It's a, it's a very serious application, uh, a lot of review. They have 180 days to review it and make a determination. So they have a six month period that they can review and, and request more information, you know, request modifications to it. So that six months is, you know, the bear is the least amount of time before uh, anything could happen. Uh, it's it's a process that has you know has taken you know has taken longer than that uh, with the state. Uh, I'd say rarely in the past few years has it ever taken less than that, uh, and that's due to mainly staffing issues at the state level and you know their retention of employees and being able to get the reviews done quickly, especially with the amount that are still coming in. Uh, so, long answer. Was that short answer is won't be well, most likely won't be any movement within six months. Now, is there is there any kind of uh, chance that the DEP could reject this? Uh, there's always a chance that that uh, you know projects get rejected. Uh, more often than not, they you know request changes until until it's, it's satisfactory to to all the entities. Um, in my in my years of, of trying to get things you know permitted and, and, and designing designing systems like this, uh, I have not had any flat out rejected. Uh, it's always been you know 
you have a back and forth with uh, with the reviewers, and and you want to make sure that you're taking all their you know all of their opinions and and you know, what they want to get done into account. Uh, they lay it all out in you know the regulations before you get there. You know that application I put together. It's this is you know, this this is the application for the site location. So it's it's pretty substantial, and they have a lot of a lot of things you know spelled out in what you have to do. And then this is this is just the stormwater management study that was done for it. So it's a it's a serious amount of work, and there's there's a lot of boxes you have to check, and a lot of you know. Right. design parameters that you need to follow. So by the time you get to the state, you've kind of weeded out what won't fly. And then if there's something in particular that they want to see, then you work with them to, to make sure you know everybody has, has their, their thoughts and priorities taken care of. So. so uh, I, I, another simple question, is uh, they going to be um, so each lot is it going to be self-sustaining, basically, or is, so is, it, is each lot going to be self-sustaining? Um, well, mean, so as far as, as most far rural as, lots have a well and a septic, and so the lot would be a self-sustaining for. Uh, yeah, the answer, uh, the question basically was, are they on septic and sewer? Yeah. And the answer is, these are all going to be on municipal water, municipal sewer. Uh, so there will there will be no septic, you know, fields out here. Uh, there will be no wells, you know, impacting the groundwater. Uh, per se. So these are, it's going to be an extension of uh, the municipal sewer and water lines throughout the, uh, throughout the subdivision. Uh, and that portion of it, there's uh, a, you know, a new, new sewer pump house is, is proposed in here. Uh, it's basically getting it down to the lowest point and pumping it back up to the municipal system. Uh, so there's, it's, it's designed to have minimal impact with regard to that, with regard to you know, putting pollutants from the houses into the land, so. I have a question. Yes, sir. My name is Jerry Norman. I live on Norman Court. Now, if they put the water and sewer up that road, will I have to tap into it? Uh, it's Gary Norman and a question if they put the water and sewer up the road, will he have to tap into it? And that, uh, I know you weren't here earlier, but uh, most of this presentation is mostly just for the environmental impacts and questions uh, regarding that. Uh, but I believe that would be uh, that's going to be a question for the town as of, as of what they would require you to do uh, if there was municipal water and sewer running by your lot, mm -hmm. and that's not going to be it's not going to be part of the developers, you know, the developers, you know, purview. That that's kind of out of their hands. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's something you definitely inquired the town about and, well, and I see mean, what they You think you've lived on all them years and you didn't have to have all that, you know. Well, if, you, if you're not hooked up to anything now, your grandfather did, you shouldn't have to. Oh, so I because I think the thing I feel bad the most existing is that would be a plant, you know, for a while. You know, every time you wear it, I feel bad for the nature. You need to have a conversation about, you know. I feel bad for nature. I get animals that walk through my yard all the time, deer, turkeys. They're both being pushed into a rural area. They have no place to go. I would think that the state would get involved in maybe preserving certain parts of land so nature could live. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I know somebody buys a piece of land, you're hoping he's going to make money. And that's fine, you made money. But maybe there's destruction behind making money of sorts. Yeah, and, uh, the comment was, you know, we just hope there's, there'd be as little impact as possible to wildlife and maybe, you know, some kind of trade-off that can be made for these you know, these developments. Well, that I don't really see a trade-off yeah. when you take the habitat away. I don't see any, any trade-off there at all. None. There is no trade-off. Not for I know it's wild animals, but still nature is important to us. And the 
come it is that nature is important and keeping the wild animals you know, protected and still maintain some habitat uh, to, to be able to support them. And that's, it's, that's one, of the big, one of the big reasons that the DEP you know, does exist. It's, it's so that there aren't, you know, aren't the free-for-all, you know, get a, you know, uh, track the land that was, you know, that was 40 feet wide and then they, they pull through and, and have, you know, 200 foot lots, you know, going all the way off it. So you end up having, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with spaghetti lots. And that's when back in, you know, back in the day, back in the sixties, you'd have a road coming through by a, you know, by a pond or a lake and they'd sell, you know, 70 foot, five foot wide lots that go out to the, go out to the water and then spread out a little bit, just enough so you get a house in. So you end up having all these driveways and, and things like that. Uh, and that's why the, you know, the EPA, you know, put together a lot of things, the Clean Water Act, all of these things that the developers do have to follow now to, to make, try to maintain and make sure that there is still, you know, sufficient area for wildlife and, and you know, and natural resources. It's, it's not something that gets ignored with things like this. Uh, it's, it's taken into account pretty heavily and... And the other scary part is that these houses go in and this housing market crashes. <laughs> Yeah, That'll be a good thing too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, hey, this used to look nice. <laughs> you know, because that happens. We do the cycles. We just happen to be in a good cycle, but don't think it's going to last another three years, especially with all that's going on. That got ceased. Ain't going to happen. What? Like I said, they. Uh, you know, the comment was, you know, what if it gets approved and then the housing market goes goes down? It's not, it's not really part of part of the information I have to give today. But I, you know, it's the future can't be predicted. Then the wildlife can stay there. <laughs> well, I tell you right now, then lucky my father wasn't alive. When that land went up for sale, he'd have bought it, so nobody could build. That's, then he would have left me the headache, but <laughs> that's, that's always enough. He, he would have done it. <laughs> would have taken I know my brother. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always an option. Not for this, it's too late. Well, I look at it this way, in my opinion, I wish it could never happen. But if it does, there really isn't much I can do about it. Only express my opinion, as we all have. <laughs> yep, the comment was, uh, you can't you know, do anything about it, but you can express your opinion. And that's, that's actually kind of one of the things that the meeting is for. So we, you have that outlet. Uh, I don't know if you grabbed one of those, uh, one, of the, one of the notices there. The DEP does want to hear from, you know, from the public. It's, you know, it's a public entity. It's, it's, uh, it's the reason they, you know, they want developers to have these and, and to put the word out into the community. Uh, it's, you know, it's not like they're trying to be, you know, they're not pro-development, they're not anti-development, they're, they just write the regulations and, and they, they want everybody to follow them and they want to make sure everyone in the community knows that it's, it's being done to those, you know, to the develop to the to the standards that the state and, and the local municipalities have put forward, you know. So it's 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 the best attempt, you know, to, to make sure everyone's on the same page. So yeah, by all means it's it's one of the reasons that they, they have this requirement is to make sure everyone knows that they can contact the DEP and make sure, you know, their comments are heard. You know, I, I, I come from Massachusetts originally. We just bought, we sold and bought, a, we built up here on Halflinger in 2017. <clears throat> and I, I had a brand new house in Malden, Massachusetts, which is right outside of Boston. I could see the control tower or the airport from my front windows. And they didn't prepare like this. So that, I'm giving you a, a, a good word because the way you guys are doing it 
They don't do it like that down there. Alan said I was so doing a great job. Out. No, thank you. I appreciate it. That's and he's just said notice notice that you know other developments that that he's you know seen go up and you know developments around Massachusetts they didn't have quite as much quite as much thought or input put into them uh, and I to be honest I haven't worked anywhere else my whole life this I've been with Silicon Consultants for 18 years and and I've always been in the area and I've I've been doing a lot of the environmental and, and the stormwater studies and, and and things like that and even when I came into the came into the scene 18 years ago a lot of developers were you know furious at us for telling them this is what you have to do you can't just you can't just do whatever you want out here and it's it's something that you know society has kind of come around to and and you know there's more involvement with the public and there's more acceptance with uh, you know us as designers being able to being able to try to put things together that are more you know, environmentally uh, you know cohesive and 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 get developers to, to realize that this is the way things have to be done you can't you can't just go out and do whatever you want anymore so I I appreciate that Alan. I mean we've, we've, we really try to do our best with these it's you know it's we realize there's there's always you know some uh, you know some pushback and some uh, some trepidation on a lot of these but we we do try to take everything into account and and take everybody's you know opinion and and and, and you know perspective into account when we're doing these designs so. now when they make the roads they all going to be um standard to town uh, the question in other was words, the town plows it the question was uh are all the town, all the roads going to be to, to the town standards and taken over by the town for maintenance and everything? Uh, and I, as we we did go over that a little earlier, uh, the intent here is to have uh, the town take over this road when completed and connect it back in. Uh, as you may know, the town can't take over a cul-de-sac; it's always going to be a private road. So these would be private. This would be private, and this up here would be a private extension. But these roads that connect through here would all be, if accepted by the town, would be town roads. And kind of just like to look at the map. Yep. Because I'd like to see where I am. Yep. I bought this Norman Court. There you go. So you're coming in right here. That's right here. Yep. Yeah, if you look down, it might be a little easier for you. You got names on this one. All right. Okay. This is coming up. Yeah, yeah. How many houses are we talking? Oh, are you kidding me? 53 lots here. Three with the full, full build out. Are you kidding me? That's a lot of houses. Yeah. <laughs> that scares me. <laughs> you just have to send your comments up to the DEP and have them come down and research it more. and It might delay it some, you know. Well. Again, I look at the nature thing, I'm sorry, we're, we're weeding it out in that area. There ain't much room for them to travel, you know? Sad but true. I look at the human aspect, but I also look at the animals. It's been you know, there's some questions that haven't been answered because it's not not really part of, of my process here, but I, it will be an ongoing an ongoing process, and you know, we want everyone to stay involved. Uh, it's like I said, it's it's something that's you know it's it's heavily reviewed, heavily scrutinized. We you know, we're not in the business of trying to hide anything from anyone, so it's it's if you have questions, you know, feel free to ask. I I answer. You know everything I can, uh, you know intelligently. If I can't answer it intelligently, I'm probably just gonna say, <laughs> "Yeah, I'll talk to somebody else," because I'll just mess it up for you. So, uh, but I mean, I think that's. I think we've covered the majority of of uh, the information I was trying to get, you know, conveyed tonight. Uh, it's it's something that if you left your left your email address on there, uh, you can feel free to 
just look us up. It's you know, sifcon.com, and just uh, and just you can shoot us an email anytime or call the office. You know, you can you find our contact information on there, and it should be on the notices that were sent. Uh, we'll do whatever we can to to answer questions. It's not you know this isn't the end of of answering questions, so it's an ongoing thing. And you know, if there if there are any more questions, I can answer uh, tonight. So do you know the next step? Um, the question is, do I know the next step? Uh, as far as the DEP permitting or, or just... Or uh, what, is it, is it going to the planning board? The traffic study will be done? Right, uh, as far as I know, the traffic study is, is um, still in the works for, to be done. Uh, so that will have to be, that'll have to be put together and, and compiled and recommendations given and presented back to the, to the planning board. I'm not sure on the time frame on that one. Uh, I don't. I again, that's. I haven't been haven't been involved with with that portion of it, so I'm not sure where that uh, where that part of the project stands. Uh, I know the stormwater and the site location plan. Those will all be submitted uh, tomorrow. Uh, since we had the had the public information meeting today, uh, we we you know document uh, how many people came and 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 uh, some of the comments, and that gets submitted with the application. And then, so from there, that starts the clock for the six months for the DEP and all the entities to review that. Uh, this project also requires, uh, since we have the crossing of, of Coffin Brook here, uh, it'll be re uh, reviewed by the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, and they want to make sure that we're meeting all the requirements for you know, stream crossings. And again, that's more to do with you know with wildlife and keeping that stream healthy, uh, because it's that's one of their red flags that existing crossing was never was never installed you know as it should have been so uh, they'll go through a full review of that and then uh, the national you know, national uh, resource protection agency uh, review and permit as well as because as you know it's such a it's such a you know, long road coming through this uh, through this area they'll want to review it and get their input in as well How many acres is that all together? Oh, you had to ask me that. Huh? Dwelling houses? <laughs> we had it written on here. Oh, but they also have a little bit of clear acre, clear spots there where they're not disturbed. But it's right. still going to be pretty compact. You don't have the existing. Not, not at all. Yeah, that's, that's progress. Well, the very first one, 24. It was 24, yeah. yeah. I, a lot of progress. Oh, I, honestly, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I might have it here in the report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, beyond that. All right. The answer is 60.4. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. 60.4 60. 60. acres. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Between the two. Right. right. Yep. For the total. Yeah. Okay. Now, did they somehow buy out where Hackling Lane is? Or are they in cahoots with somebody? The question is, did they buy out where <laughs> Halfling Lane is? Yeah. Is that when you made this portion here? Yeah. This was the beginning of the Damaris subdivision that was permitted. It was permitted through, and uh, then the amendment they amended it uh, to just to just develop these lots, right. and left the and left the the easement to continue that road down through to continue the uh, the subdivision in the future. And that had all been that had all been permitted the DEP prior to you know the new wave of requirements so it was actually it was permitted with lesser requirements so we've we've done much more treatment on it this time than was required prior yeah. prior there was we we came in and we did you know little smaller buffer strips along the property line smaller buffer strips around the wetland and that was it didn't do anything else so it's uh, we've gone through done quite a bit more you know Alleviation of stormwater and, and treatment of stormwater with, with the plan we have presented here. So. Now you say 
they're gonna put a pumping station in? Yeah, the sewer pump station, yeah. Like a the handle on up of that those houses, right? I hope I sewer treatment plant can handle all this crap. They build the houses like crazy. <laughs> and the question was, yeah, I hope that thing's big enough because I remember when they built it, that was a question. The question was, yeah, he hopes the sewer treatment plant is big enough, and that's that is that actually is part of our uh, yeah, that is part of our review. One. Yep, <laughs> our part of, part of our review is to go to the to the sewer district and confirm that they have the capacity. <laughs> if you can't get a letter of capacity for something like this, then you just take it right off the table. So. Yeah. What if you what if you got a letter of uh, uh, that they couldn't meet the capacity? What would then happen? Uh, generally, what we've done was was reduce the load, uh, but there is options where you can you can pay for improvements. Uh, that's usually in a bigger city municipality. If you do something in Summersworth, yeah, you you get ready to pay you know a big sewer impact fee. At yeah. Dover, places like so that. We get dumped on. <laughs> the we get was, dumped on to like somebody's making money. That don't seem fair. Don't even seem fair at all. <laughs> That's the way life is, Boof. Yeah. Well, you know what? Don't dump on me. <laughs> <laughs> Give him hell, Gary. Give him hell. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think I brought my father with me. I think so. <laughs> Again, if, if it happens, it happens, I guess, but I wish the hell it didn't. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say it. Can we quote it if we all send it the same? <laughs> 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 send in your letters to the EP. Ditto. This guy's got a representative for that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have one other, one other question. Oh, yes. I'm sure and, she uh, yes. is. Uh, is enough. light pollution in your plant? Uh, I don't worry about it. The question was, is light pollution in the plant? Yes, it, it, is, uh, it is included. Is what uh, pollution? Light, light pollution. pollution. Extreme and, and that's What the heck is that? It's a it's Massachusetts fireflies. thing. <laughs> no, no, it's a lot, it's a fireflies. It's a wildlife thing. If you have too many street lights, then it causes night sky interruptions for migratory birds, right. insects, Correct. bats. Correct. Yep. It Take upsets your sleep cycle because there's too much ambient light and it you can't get a good night's sleep. And that, yeah, and that all but other than that, it's nothing. That all has taken into account. I know, uh, and like I said, and especially in my time since I started, uh, the dark sky requirements right. for uh, for all developments have, have really tightened down. Um, especially the bigger they get, the more uh, the more they, they they take a look at it and they want to see you know they want to see a more dark sky yep. you know, compliant development. It's yeah. they've you know they've they've begun you know limiting uh, you know, limiting you know tree cutting times uh, to to have less interference with bats and, and bat habitats and and uh, you know, back sleep cycles even. So it's 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 something that's it's come a long way since I've started doing it and it's and it's uh, it's something that's no longer gets overlooked, you know, through the planning and permitting process. So for this project, will there be street lights? I don't believe there are street lights proposed for this project. Uh, it's it's you know, it's intended, you know, to be more of, you know, the rural residential uh, road and not a main, you know, you don't want to make it a main thoroughfare with, uh, you know, with major street lights at every corner. It's not, it's not a collector street where you're going to have, uh, you're going to have passenger travel through there. It's all, you know, it's all local, you know, yeah, local travel. Yeah, it's, it's, it'd be a horrible shortcut if you cut through this thing. So. <laughs> yeah. You'd be very lost. Thank you. You have all the millions and millions and millions of bats that are there now that we see every night will still be there. 
Well, the ones that live in my barn. Yeah, and the, yeah, the comment was about the bats. You know, it's still sticking around. But uh, yeah, no, they they tend to find they tend to find places. You know, even when you're you think you may you, know, you think you lost them all, and then and then you'll find you know, you'll find three hundred three hundred in one spot where you used to used to find. Oh, Japping out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the hell behind the chimney. Yeah. Uh, maybe he could get a free bat out of his Yeah. Now, how long does this project plan take him if it's start and finish? Uh, the question was how long does the project take start to finish? That's that's a tough uh, it's a tough one to answer. It's it would have to be a three-phase project, uh, just due to the, the building permit restrictions right. uh, in Berwick, and you know we have we have at least six months of review with DEP. Uh, so when you start you start putting all that out, you know you're you're looking at a you're looking at a four or five-year project just due to the due to the restrictions and permitting. So, but that's again that's one of those crystal ball questions where it's yeah, tough to yeah. tough to say. I'm still working on Demaris's piece. Ooh. The piece behind me, that's part of it. They're still working on that. They started that in like 05, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Demaris. Well, piece. maybe, maybe I get to be too old to worry about this. <laughs> Before he even. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did good. I think I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Me, they was up. Yeah. yeah I'm behind you did good. You. See you, Vern. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? I'm more than happy to answer. No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thank, are you, are you, thank you. Been been informative. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, thank you very I genuinely appreciate, appreciate people appreciate coming out. Appreciate the and, candidness. And, yeah, appreciate people coming out and spending the time and. Yeah. and you know, well, it's all good for us to have right. it's, questions yeah, it's, it's, and answers.